All right, you guys, gather around the campfire as Grandpa goes back and starts talking about other things. And today's topic of discussion is something I didn't realize Netflix did. Back in my day, Netflix was a company that you could go on their website, you can rent DVDs, have it come in the mail, and then you can put said DVD back in the mail and have another one to you in like three business days. But today's topic of conversation, because remember, everything goes full circle, is this. Netflix claims Fortnite is a bigger competitor than HBO. If you look at this article, this article came out January of 2019. We're moving into November, almost December of 2023. And guess what? If you can't beat them, join them. <laughs> Three Grand Theft Auto titles are coming to Netflix mobile gaming library. Netflix on Wednesday announced that Grand Theft Auto titles will be joining the company's mobile gaming library. Available for subscribers to play next month. My question to you guys is, did you guys know that Netflix runs a uh, mobile gaming subscriber service? Because I didn't know this. Is <laughs> It's a big get for Netflix as Grand Theft Auto is one of the best-selling video game franchises of all times. Also, it's probably one of the biggest cock teases of all times because we're still waiting on GTA 6 announcement trailer. It's unclear if the news release will uh, drive subscriber growth. Well, the question is, is like, how, do you, uh, how do you access these games? I have no idea. Netflix announces Wednesday will make the three Grand Theft Auto titles available to play for subscribers next month. Like, on top of that, like, do you have to have, like, the premium subscription to get it? And if you don't have the premium, do you have to, like, watch ads in order to, like, see any of this? Rockstar Games Grand Theft Auto Trilogy, the definitive edition, definitive edition, will launch December 14th on Apple App Store. Google Play, and in the Netflix mobile app. Well, that right there answers my question on how you're going to be able to play this. you got to download the Netflix mobile app in order to play it. The streaming media company said in a blog post, the release will include Grand Theft Auto 3, Vice City, and of course San Andreas, the definitive edition. Subscribers will not, uh, not, subscribers will not need a controller to play the mobile releases like most Netflix 80s, uh, 80 game library. Like I said, I did not even know Netflix even offered this. Grand Theft Auto Trilogy Definitive was available before concerts 2021. Anyways, uh, the games are uh, the games are big gets for Netflix as its mobile game lags behind other publishers and downloads. Um, it shouldn't because like if it's included in part of your your, your mobile, like you should not be lagging behind because I guarantee you there's probably way more people that have mobile. Netflix than anything else um, is one of the best-selling video game franchises of all time. Now I guarantee you this guy had a word limit because he just keeps throwing in their biggest-selling video franchise of all time, shipping more than 405 million units worldwide according to data. Is the first time Netflix has gotten its hands on a big name franchise. This is probably why the first time we're ever hearing about it as well. Netflix re- releases. Sonic Prime Dash earlier this year for mobile platforms. The title is based on Sega's Sonic the Hedgehog, which is gaming company's best-selling franchise according to... Yeah, that's a, no, that's a no-brainer. I want you guys to name another franchise that Sega has. Go ahead, I'll wait. Comment down below. Let me know. Because I'm not going to spoil any right now. It's unclear if the licensing another popular franchise will lead to more subscribers downloading the games or if it will release with attract new Netflix customers or subscribers. Uh, I haven't had Netflix in probably two years. Netflix edition of GTA is by far its most promising game launch and shows uh, Netflix is getting more serious about gaming. You know why? This right here. Fortnite is the biggest competitor <laughs> for, for Netflix. Um, and, uh, blah, blah. anyways, playing Vice City or San Andreas on your phone is a cool feature for existing subscribers, but doesn't expect new subscribers to sign up just to access a game they're probably already familiar with so that they can play it 
in an inferior format. Um, yeah, I don't see how... Yeah, yeah. Like, the problem I'm having with this is, like, how much did Netflix pay the Take-Two Rockstar, whoever they're licensing said game from, to get it to their platform? And also, on top of that, how long is it licensed for? That's the biggest question. Because I'm going to laugh if it was, like, licensed for six months or a year, and then it's gone, and you're going to have to rely on those other 80 games that guess what i don't think we know what are you know what the other 80 games are even um the company has started testing games on larger screen devices netflix in august uh said in august the beta test required gamers to use their phones as a controller when playing on the tv which i mean i guess that's a cool way to do it instead of getting control a controller to do it it's been two years since netflix announced its push into gaming and the effort has puzzled wall street and the industry experts alike the streaming uh, giant has outwardly maintained a rosy outlook for gaming efforts despite the recent download data that implied less than 1% of subscribers play Netflix games on a daily basis. Whew. Netflix gaming's trajectory is different from the gaming company uh, company has seen when launching other initiatives. Netflix co-CEO Greg Peterson said that the company's third quarter earnings uh, last month um, we've launched a new region or when we launch a new genre like unscripted, we have to crawl, walk, run. That's uh, any new venture that you like you try to get into. You have to crawl, walk, want, run. And going out there and getting GTA is the run phase. They've been out supposedly if this is two years in the in the making, I feel like they've definitely skipped the crawl walk run because I haven't heard anything about this. Until they announced that they had GTA coming. And like I said, it's caught my attention because like you you're doing this and yeah, it just doesn't make sense to me that you're doing this and the like the other 80 games. Like what are these other 80 games that you have to offer on your subscription service that you still have yet to like really get out there and get going? Because, like, are these games, are, are these indie games, or like, how much are you paying for these games? Like, is this why my, like, the Netflix subscription went from, like, $12 a month, and now people are paying $20 a month? Don't give me the line that it's because of all the other uh, TV shows and movies that you're putting out there, because a lot of it's dog shit and reality TV shows. It's not even good stuff. So, is the subscription price going up because you're going and you're getting these big AAA titles to try to attract people to like, hey, we're, we have this additional service that we offer and we're not charging anything extra for it, but you're passing the cost on to the consumer. It doesn't make sense to me because I'm telling you right now, if I want to play the GTA Definitive Trilogy, I'm booting up my PlayStation, I'm booting up my PC, I'm booting up something. I'm not going to play it in mobile, mobile format. It just doesn't make sense. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. That's my two cents. I thought that was an interesting article. Anyways, you guys, y'all take it easy. Have a wonderful day. Bye.